there. Right, as you can see, the Merton Customs polished stainless steel rangers are now ready and on the shelves. But there are one or two fiddly little bits involved when it comes to actually fitting them. So today I'm going to show you how to fit them. Just to make it easier for you and to remove any elements of confusion. And I'll get onto that in just a moment or two. Now, the other thing is that if you remember last summer, Motone Customs did one of these photo competitions, one every month with some fantastic prizes. Well, guess what? They're doing it again this year, starting with this month, June's photo competition, and I will give you all details on how to enter that, including details of what prizes are available at the end of this video. Now, as you may or may not know, I live in a sort of semi-rural area. I'm surrounded by farmland here. And by a strange coincidence, last week, the postman accidentally posted a copy of the Holderness Cow Tippers and Tick Twisters Gazette through my door. And there was a really interesting article about the East Yorkshire accent. Now, in this article, it was suggested that listening to a Yorkshireman's voice for at least 20 minutes a week can enhance your lifespan. Now, it occurred to me that I'm from East Yorkshire, and on average, I talk for about 30 minutes a week over two videos on this channel. So if you're not a subscriber, I would recommend that you subscribe now by hitting that subscribe button, pressing the notification bell, and making sure that all your notifications are enabled for a longer, healthier, happier life. I mean, there's got to be some truth in it, hasn't there? I've got 56,000 subscribers on this channel and they're all still alive. Right, so when you receive your set of polished rangers, they'll each be individually boxed and then bundled up like this. As it stands at the moment, these polished stainless steel versions are available, but there'll be a little bit of a wait still for the black versions. These pegs are not interchangeable. Each one is designed specifically for a specific location on the bike. And that position is clearly marked on each box. I know Motown have already sold quite a few sets of these stainless steel foot pegs. And of course the foot pegs are all designed to look exactly the same once they're fitted. They've got to match. But where people are getting tripped up is they're not paying attention to which foot peg goes where. Which understandably causes you a bit of a headache when it comes to fitting it. Now, on each label on each of the boxes, after the word footrest, there are two letters in brackets and these denote the location of the footrest. So we've got FR for front right, FL for front left, RL for rear left, and RR for rear right. Now if you take them all out of the boxes and mix them up, you lose this ability to identify them and it does cause some head scratching trying to work out which one then goes where. So my advice is to leave them all in the boxes and just unpack each one as it comes to fitting it. Now we'll start with the front left peg because that's slightly different from the front right. The reason being that you can't withdraw the pin because the clutch cover is in the way. The first thing that you need to do is remove the C-clip that secures that pin in place. You can usually just do this with your fingernails but it might require the use of a couple of screwdrivers or something like that. In the centre of the foot peg fixing there is a spring. Before disassembly, pay attention to how that spring is fitted. It has a long tailed extension with a bend in the end which goes into an aperture on the foot peg bracket. Now at the other end of that spring there's a smaller tail which must point upwards when you refit it because this ensures that the foot peg itself springs back down if it's knocked upwards. 
It is possible to accidentally fit this spring so that that shorter tail doesn't engage properly on the footrest and this will have the effect of pulling the foot peg up rather than pushing it down so just be aware of that. In order to be able to withdraw the securing pin properly what you're going to have to do is just unfasten the two allen bolts that hold the bracket onto the chassis of the bike. Don't remove it completely, just loosen it off so that you can tip the whole bracket down to give you enough clearance. You can then fully withdraw the pin and remove your old footrest. Now the eagle-eyed among you will have realised that I'm removing the old prototype black versions of the Ranger. But this procedure is exactly the same with these as it is with the OEM pegs. So take your front left foot peg marked FL in brackets on the box. Do any cleanup and re-greasing that you feel is necessary on your spring and on your pin. And you can then fit your front left peg. Insert your spring the correct way around into your foot peg and then holding it with your thumb and forefinger fit it into the bracket then insert your pin now this can be a little bit awkward and it takes some jiggling about to get it in and the most difficult part of this is getting that short tailed part of the spring in the correct place as you can see here it slipped down while I was fitting it and it was causing the peg to spring upwards so this might take two or three attempts the spring does create a little bit of tension that makes it difficult to get the pin back in. If you're struggling you can insert something like a fairly thick allen key or a screwdriver into the bottom aperture in order to sort of coax the foot peg to line up properly with the bracket and that will make it easier to insert. And once you've got it back in place properly refit that c-clip and obviously fasten up those two allen bolts that hold the assembly onto the chassis of the bike. You can then go ahead and transfer your angle lean indicator from your old peg onto your new peg. Or if you like, you can order some of those titanium sparky ones from Moton. And that's your front left done. Fitting the rear foot pegs is a completely different procedure. In with your pack you should find bundled with it two M8 by 15 mm stainless steel washers. You may or may not require these and I'll explain the reason for their presence in this pack in a few moments. First of all remove your C-clip in exactly the same manner as the front pegs. Then carefully slide your pin out. Now, Keep your hands underneath the assembly while you do this because there is a spring-loaded ball bearing which is likely to fall out once you release the foot peg from its mounting. Clean this up and put it somewhere safe along with your C-clip. Then use something like a small allen key to retrieve the spring from inside the foot peg. And again, clean it up ready for reassembly. Then take your new foot peg out of its box, in this case the rear left or RL, and insert your spring into the second hole on your new foot peg. It might be an idea to use some grease to secure this in place and stop it from falling out while you're fitting it. It also helps to keep the ball bearing in place. Now in this picture you can see that there's a captive assembly which is actually still on the bracket and this is what actuates the ball bearing and locks your rear foot peg up in the folded up position. Remove that assembly Clean it up and then press it against the ball bearing in its correct orientation on the foot peg. And this will effectively hold everything in place as you put everything together. Just carefully manoeuvre it and slide it in and then slide your securing pin back in place. It might require a little bit of jiggling about to get it in but this is much easier than one of the front pegs. Just make sure that you don't release tension on that sprung ball bearing and use it while you're doing this. Because if you lose it, you're stuffed until you get a replacement. Check it for operation to make sure that the peg locks up and locks in the down position and then you should be good to go. Now, if you find that when you put downward pressure on that peg it sags 
you're going to need to use one of those washers that's included in the pack. As so often happens with Triumph motorcycles, you find slight discrepancies from one batch to another. I know exhaust upgrades for owners have been a bit of a headache over the years because of this, and it seems to be caused by specification errors between batches, because it doesn't appear to be a model specific problem. Now what it seems to be is that from batch to batch the foot peg mouldings are slightly different and the knock on the back of the foot peg, the part that engages with the bracket and holds it horizontally when it's folded down are of differing lengths. It's only about a millimetre and as far as we can tell Triumph are using a slightly different thickness of bolt head to address the problem. So if when you've fitted your first rear foot peg it does sag, the remedy is to fit one of the included M8 washers onto the bolt that holds the assembly onto the frame. And this securely and permanently packs it out to the required specifications. Only use these washers if your rear foot pegs sag. If they don't sag, don't use them because what it'll do is it'll make it sit up at a slight angle. Most people are finding that they're not required, but Motone have decided to include them with the pack just to make sure that no one's disappointed. I don't know, the joys of making custom parts for Triumphs, eh? Don't forget to refit your C-clips when you've completed this job. And that's your rear foot peg assemblies sorted. Now, I'm just going to allow the front right foot peg assembly video to run while I talk about the Motone competition. And it's important to remember with the front right hand side that you don't need to loosen off the bracket assembly from the chassis as there is already ample clearance to get that pin out. As you might remember, last year during the lockdowns, Motone ran a series of Motone photo competitions. And this year they've decided to do something along similar lines, only this year the prizes are bigger. And Sam has decided that in order to make it fairer, every competition entry that is shown in the announcement video because usually during that video we don't just show the winners and the runners up we show a number of competition entries that didn't win will receive a mystery consolation prize from Motone Customs so even if you're not a winner but you're one of those entries that we do show in the announcement video you will still get a mystery prize in order to be eligible for this competition you must be a subscriber of this channel and you must have Motone parts fitted to your motorcycle which must be clearly visible in your competition entry photographs. It doesn't matter what model motorcycle you own and it doesn't matter how many Motone parts you have fitted to the motorcycle but there must be at least one and it must be clearly visible in all the photographs and you're allowed a maximum of three photographs of your bike per entry. There are no restrictions on where the photographs can be taken this time because obviously we're no longer in lockdown. Sam at Merton will be the judge for these photos and he will take artistic composition into account when judging. All competition entries must be submitted to Sam at Merton and I will give an email address in the video description down below by the 30th of June 2021 and that's midnight British summer time on the 30th of June. That is the cutoff point and any competition entries entered after that will not be taken into account for this competition. And I would also like to make it clear, because we did have a problem with this last year, that if you do not have any Motone parts clearly visible in your photographs, your entry will be disqualified. Now, please be aware that by submitting these photographs to Motone for the photo competition, you are consenting to both Motone using them for marketing purposes either on their site or through their various social media channels and also you're consenting to me using it for public display on the announcement video. If you have a problem with that, don't enter the competition. 
Now, if you don't have any motor parts fitted to your motorcycle yet, don't worry, there is still time. And of course, you can also use this exclusive channel Merton discount code of Cactus, which will entitle you to a 12% discount on any parts that you buy from Merton Customs. I'll leave that down in the video description down below. Right, so what are the prizes? Well, apart from the mystery consolation prize that everyone who's shown in my video will receive, there are three runners-up prizes composing of a Merton gift voucher to the value of £50. Second prize is a Merton gift voucher for £100. And the grand prize, or first prize, will be a Merton gift voucher to the tune of 250 of your great British pounds. And I think that's all quite a hike from the uh, values that were available last year. So that's it. If you haven't got any parts, get some and get them fitted, and then get snappy. Oh, and just a reminder, please make sure that your photographs are in 16-9 ratio landscape, not portrait otherwise i won't be able to display it properly in video format right i think that's everything once again i hope you found this video useful and enjoyed it if you have please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to this channel i will of course be back on friday where i'll be sorting out those telltale lights on the instrument panel on the bullet i couldn't leave it any longer it was driving me mad but until then Please, if you're riding, ride safely, and I will see you soon.